Hi, welcome or welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you the lift kit that I finally purchased for this Jeep Gladiator Rubicon Eco Diesel. It took me a while to decide, get around, and also save the money to purchase the lift kit. I did some other modifications that cost a lot. Everything in due time, finally got the money together for the lift kit. I've already put a set of bigger tires, some 35 by 11 and a half, Nino trail grapplers on here. I put some Mopar rock rails with a step on here. I put a worn winch and warrant bumper on this jeep those videos you can all see on my channel all the install videos check them out those are a great help if you're interested in putting any of those things on a either a wrangler or a uh, gladiator um, but in this video i'm going to show you the lift kit i bought show you the parts and some of the things i learned by looking over the instructions that come with the lift kit so this video is not sponsored i will have links in the description where you can purchase some of the products that you see in the video but i do get a, a little commission if you use my link to purchase stuff it doesn't raise the cost of the price of the products to you but it does help out the channel Channel helps me out. Thanks a lot for joining me here and let's go ahead and we'll go in my garage where I got the lift kit. We'll check out the box, take some of the stuff out, look at the parts in case you're considering putting this lift kit on your own vehicle. So let's go. So this is the cool crate that the Mopar lift kit comes in. It's delivered in this crate. It protects all the parts and it's a reusable shipping container. To get one of these you have to buy a Jeep Mopar lift kit. Uh, this is my second one. That plank over there, that, that panel is from the first lift kit I bought and I put some polyurethane on it, makes a nice wall decoration. Uh, if you guys end up buying the lift kit or you already have one, let me know in the comments what you did with your crate. If you're enjoying the video, find it informative, get something out of it, hit that thumbs up button, give me, leave me a comment, let me know how I'm doing. And also consider subscribing to the channel. I got a lot of other great videos, how to's on how to do a lot of other stuff to the Jeep. Check them out. I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm gonna go through this really quick, this parts list. When you open the crate, the first thing you're probably gonna see is some ducks. And these ducks were in the crate, three ducks. There's two Mopar and one Bilstein. I don't know what you guys think of ducks. Ducks are not going away. They're a big part of jeeping, just like the wave. The second thing you'll see is this paper and it has a QR code. You're gonna hit that QR code. You can go and you'll get the Mopar directions for installing this lift kit. You go to a PDF and then you can print it like I did here. And that gives you all the instructions for putting the lift kit on, tells you all the torque values. It even tells you how to adjust your headlights after. And it also tells you alignment uh, specifications. Two track bars, these are gonna be a little longer than the existing ones. They're gonna maintain the geometry after you've lifted the Jeep. These are the rear springs and they're pretty awesome looking and they're progressive. At the bottom here, you'll see they have a tighter coil than the top. That's supposedly gonna give you a better ride as, as you're uh, driving around the road. These are the front springs. I'm not sure if these are also progressive springs. Right now, with the stock suspension, my bumper and my winch that I put on the front, I'm bottoming out on that, that Gladiator. But hopefully these springs will eliminate that problem of when I go over a bump that I'm hitting the bump stops. That's not cool. These are bump stop extenders for the rear of the Jeep. So these are gonna lift two inches. These are bump stop extensions that are gonna be inside the front springs. These are coil spring isolator pads. You get two of these too. These have to go on the proper side. These sway bar end links they give you. They give you these sway bar end links in the kit. These are the rear, the longer ones. These are the front. And you might notice sitting here on the table, a Jeep only has four sway bar end links, two in the front, two in the back, but they give you a total of six. These two are for the front on my Jeep Gladiator, any Jeep Gladiator or, or JL, Wrangler JL, that's over 2024 gets these different ones. And these have a little bit stouter bolt on them. Uh, I'll close up, but you can see this is the stouter 2024 plus. This is the one for my Jeep under 2024. I went with the Bilstein Reservoir Shocks and this is the rear shock. You can only get these with a Jeep kit. You're not gonna be able to buy these, just these shocks aftermarket. It's this whole kit is all tuned to work together, but really cool. This reservoir is gonna piggyback onto this rear shock. Um, they, off, they give you the parts you need. There's two loops here and this is gonna be piggyback on the rear. The front has a left and a right and this is the reservoir is remotely located up near the bumper on this one. And they give you a bracket to attach this onto the frame. They give you some nuts, sir. They give you a bracket and a bunch of other parts. Um, some cool Bilstein stickers. You're gonna get the, the Mopar performance parts badge that you get when you buy Mopar performance parts. Now that I've shown you everything that comes with this Mopar lift kit, I need to talk about something that's not in the lift kit. 
and that is a new track bar. They don't include a track bar, they don't include an adjustable track bar to center up the axle and the body. And when you lift the vehicle, especially if you're lifting it a lot, this is only supposed to be a two inch lift. You're gonna need an adjustable track bar to change the angle and pull the, the uh, body over centered on the axle. I'm assuming, and that's a bad thing to do obviously, that you don't need one with this lift kit. I emailed Rough Country about their track bar. Their track bar is for lift kits that go from two and a half to six inches. So I asked them, well, I got a two inch lift kit. Am I gonna need it? They said, well, order them, buy them. If you don't need them, you can always send them back. And I don't wanna do that. That's a big pain in the butt. I'm going to install this thing, have it aligned, and then see if it, the body and the axle are lined up with the, the kit as I put it on. I could just get one, but my question was, well, if it's two and a half to six, and I only have a two inch lift kit is it going to even do any good am i even going to be able to adjust it to make it work for a two inch lift kit when we did it we had the lift kit installed on our wrangler the shop automatically included a new track bar and that was a two and a half inch mopar fox lift that thing drives like a dream i didn't forget about the track bar it's just that I'm waiting to see what happens. Go to the alignment shop or check the, the alignment of the, the body and the axle centering myself. And then I'll make the call after this is all installed. So I wanted to show you guys one other thing too here is I assembled my tools that I'm gonna need for this job. I did some research, I got a tool list, wrote it down on the back here, various uh, tools I'm probably gonna need to do this job. And then a couple extras, but not too many that I get too confused here. If I need something, I'm gonna have it right here. I'm not gonna have to run in the garage look through my tool trays, pull out drawers and look. Uh, I can't tell you how long, many times, uh, how long I've spent looking for 10 millimeter sockets. I own about eight 10 millimeter sockets and half the time I can't find any of them. I got everything all set up right here. I got my torque wrench, I got ratchets. This is my torque wrench for putting the wheels back on. Um, everything I think I'm gonna need, but I'm organized here. And on the bottom, I got some tire chocks, I got a, a, uh, a bottle jack. So I don't wanna be running in and out. I wanna be able to focus my energy on getting this job done, doing it right. I'll show you one other thing too. One other thing about doing this job is I had to go out and buy a floor jack and some jack stands. I had sworn I was never gonna get involved in any kind of a project like this again, where I'm crawling under the car, jacking up a car, laying underneath of it. But here I am, I'm at it again. And there's so many times when years ago I had to climb under a car, living back east uh, on a cold night, cold day, just so I could get to work the next day fixing something. And I had sworn off that kind of stuff. But here I am again. The good thing is when you do the work yourself, you're saving some money. And if you take some of that money you saved by the tools, now you have the tools and you can use them again and again. I can see using this jack. It's supposedly an off-road jack. Uh, I don't really see me making this part of my my off-road recovery kit. It's it's very heavy. Uh, I see some people, they advertise them and they've been reviewed on YouTube. I'll do some kind of review on it later, but I had to go out and buy these and I got them and I'm fully committed to getting this job done. And hopefully these two are gonna help me get through it. This jack goes way high. So that's a thing when you already have a vehicle that's taller, this will help you lift it up. It's designed to go up real high. We'll talk about the jack later in a different video, but I hope you'll join me when I start doing the install on this. I'll make the installation video, try to make a good video for you guys, show you how my experience with, with, with doing this lift kit install on the 2020 Gladiator Eco Diesel, and I will see you on that video on the next one. And don't forget, Muddy Ruts, best is yet to come.